On the build show today, we're talking deck framing. I've got five tips for you to build a really durable deck that's gonna last for at least a generation or two. But let's get going. On the build show today, we're talking deck framing five tips for building a really durable deck. Now this is the first in a series of deck videos, but this is the important foundation for your deck. It doesn't matter what deck board you use, if the foundation, the framing, everything below that isn't right, you've got a deck that's gonna fail prematurely. So first off, I wanna say a big thanks to our friends at Timbertown, that's my local dealer where I buy all my deck supplies, and Yellowwood for sponsoring today's video. Now there's three things that kill most decks and give them a premature death. Number one, water. Number two, water. And number three, water. As my friend David says, if it can't dry, it's gonna die. And you're gonna see that theme on all five of these tips today. So let's get going. Number one, we wanna choose our lumber carefully. Now our pressure treated lumber on this job is all yellow wood. Our friends at Timbertown sell yellow wood and they only sell ground contact yellow wood. Now let's talk about this for a minute. There's lots of different grades of pressure treated out there. There's also different methods of treating it. But the guys at Yellowwood are using a specific type of copper that's infused into the wood called MCA, Micronized Copper Azul. And there's a couple different grades or amounts of that you can get. But if you look at the end tag, it's gonna tell the story right here. On this end tag, it says end use, ground contact. And then it's gonna tell how much of that copper is in there. On this end tag right here, it says 0.15 PCF. That's 0.15 pounds of copper per square foot. Now, if this wood was only rated for above ground, it would say 0 0.06 pounds per foot. So this one basically has more than double the copper injected into the wood compared to one that was only rated for above ground. Now, I think this is a great choice for decks because that copper is what's keeping us from rot and decay. It's what's keeping that wood preserved over time. So a higher amount of that is a good thing. And in particular, the type of preserver they use, that micronized copper, is less corrosive to fasteners. So you don't necessarily have to go with stainless steel. You can actually use hot dip galvanized. Now, if you're on the coast or a saltwater environment, of course you wanna go stainless. But in general, you can use hot dipped when you're using this type of preservative. This is a great choice for deck framing. Tips two through five are all about either keeping the deck dry or making sure that once it gets wet, it can dry out. So tip number two, we wanna space our ledger board off of whatever we're building this deck up against. In our case here, we're building this up against the pool deck, so I actually have a uh, concrete uh, that I'm attaching my ledger to. So this makes it a little bit easier. I'm not worried about rotting out what's behind there, but I wanna space that ledger board off. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but what we're doing here is I've taken some stainless steel fender washers, I've tripled those up, and then where we epoxied some dowels in to attach our ledger, I've put those three stainless steel fender washers on first, and then we're attaching the ledger on there and bolting that on. It's gonna give us a little bit of a gap, not a massive gap, you know, something like an eighth of an inch. But what that's gonna mean is when that two by 12 ledger gets wet, it's gonna be able to dry inside or out, and we're not gonna trap moisture up against that concrete wall. Now this would be even more important if we were up against a house ledger. You know, oftentimes when you build a deck on a house, you're up against that two by 12 ledger board sitting on top of the foundation. And if we sandwich those right on there, that's a place that water can sit and that water can rot out the house. We do not want that. There's a couple ways you can do this. Again, you could use fender washers, but you actually want more of an air gap if it's a house. There's a deck spacer product you can buy online. I'll put a link in the description on that. It looks like a hockey puck with a hole in it. It's gonna get a, a bigger gap for you. Or you could even do the cheap method, which is basically cutting down some PVC pipe into one inch sections, and then using that as a sleeve everywhere you're drilling into the house. That's a really inexpensive way to go, and it's gonna get you that air gap. Okay, tip number three, posts. Now there's two options for posts. I like to opt for steel posts whenever I can. That's gonna be some type of steel four x four column that's gonna come down. If I use steel, I may have some rust that I need to deal with, but there's certainly never any rot issues. And I can put that steel post right on top of the concrete pier in this case. However, most deck jobs out there don't have that luxury. They're gonna end up using, let's say a four x four or a six x six post. 
the biggest thing, the biggest mistake I see all the time out there is people that pour a pier and then put their post right on top of that concrete pier or even worse, like a fence builder, they put that post down into a hole and then pour concrete around it. No matter what type of pressure treating you've got, you are gonna kill your deck's life by doing this. What we wanna do is have a concrete pier that's above grade, and then we're gonna use a metal post base on there so that we can set that wood off the ground. And that way when that post does get wet, it's gonna be able to dry. There's a nice air gap between that post and the concrete below it. Now one other tip that's gonna give you ultimate longevity is you wanna use an end sealer on that. Now there's a bunch of different products you can use. I happen to get this one uh, locally, but you can either dip it or you can brush it. And that's gonna seal up that end grain on that post to really give you that extra long life. Okay, next up, joist tape. Now this is slightly optional, I would say, depending on how much rain you're getting. But if you think about the fasteners for those deck boards that come down and come into our two by eights here that we're using for structure, that's a weak point on that pressure treating. And even though we've got a higher content, I'm worried that over time water's gonna sit in there in between those deck boards and rot that out. If you're in a rainy climate, you absolutely use, need to use a joist tape. In our climate, it's a little bit optional, but we're gonna opt for it here because it's really a best practice. Now, you really, you could use just about any, uh, any peel and stick for this. The guys at, Vi at Vicor make a specific one called deck protector, but really just about anybody's peel and stick is gonna work. Roughly a four inch wide peel and stick, you're gonna put that on top of all your joists, all your ledger boards, and now when we screw down in there, we're gonna have some amount of self-sealing and we're gonna reduce the amount of water that those two by materials are gonna soak up. Okay, and the fifth and final tip for you, joist spacing. You know, most decks you see out there are framed on 16 inch centers and that generally works. You don't wanna go any more than 16, but in this case, we've actually opted to go for 12 inch on centers. As I said, we've got a premium wood product here. If we run it on 12 inch centers, man, that's gonna make a really durable deck. We're gonna have really good support for our deck material, no matter what our choices are. And we're gonna make sure that even in 20 or 30 years, if someone decides to change out the deck boards for appearance reasons, we're gonna have a durable deck that's gonna last no problem that we could redeck sometime in the future. Guys, thanks for watching. If you follow these five deck tips, I think you're gonna get a deck that's gonna go 30, 40, 50 plus years, no problem. In fact, you might change your decking boards on a deck built like this, but you're not gonna to have to change your framing. Now, a couple of the specialized things we talked about, there'll be links to those in, on Amazon below. Also, I'm gonna put a link to our friends at Timbertown. They've got offices in Texas and in Georgia, so you can buy from them if you're in those locations. And big thanks to Yellowwood for sponsoring as well. A link to those guys, that's of course available nationwide. Follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.